Right, close enough. Okay, so uh, I got three things I want to talk about today. First is the HDF5 working group has moved to Zoom, so I'll give you some information about that. Then we'll talk briefly about the CVEs that were filed recently and have been fixed in 114.4. Um, and then some uh, uh, some HDF5 planning. So let's take a look. So this is the forum. So uh, I, I pinned this topic here at the top of the HDF5 channel. And so here we have the um, the Zoom link and a link to the, the wiki, right? So here's the wiki. And in here, I also have the Zoom link. And this is where we keep the agenda. And currently, so I, I've never deleted anything from the agenda, so it's getting kind of long, long here. I'll eventually snip this off and archive this stuff in like some other like sub channel or sub pages of this, um, so that this doesn't get ridiculous. I have no idea what the size limits are for the the GitHub wiki. But I don't think we're approaching it yet. Um, so yeah, and then I will every Monday I will go in and I will create a new post about what our agenda is. Now I I. If there's nothing that's going on and we don't really have any very exciting PRs, I'm going to be inclined to cancel the meeting. So, um, so if you have anything that you want to to get on this, email me at drobbins at hdfgroup.org. Um, and so in here, the only, I mean, I'm still going to have. We don't really have anything super exciting to talk about this week, but I do want to have this meeting anyway to make sure that there's no hiccups in the move to Zoom to make sure that people can get get to it and everything. I don't know how to create calendar invites in Zoom. I am not even an administrator in Zoom or company or anything, so I don't really have a special account. So we'll we'll figure this this out and try to get that stuff up. Uh, we're kind of, we're, at, we're at Teams shop, sorry. Um, so yeah, so yeah, so this this on the ninth, just for, we'll go over some PRs and we'll just make sure people come back. So the next thing I want to talk about is, so recently there are a bunch of uh, CVE issues that were filed against HDA5. These are similar to most of the other um, issues that we have had filed against the library uh, in that they are file format parsing errors, right? So if you have a malformed file and for, we try to parse it with the library, it'll trip over some stuff and they're discovered through fuzzing. Um, I, I don't know if I'm supposed to mention the name of the people who provided this to us, so I'm not going to do that right now. But thank you to the organization that gave us those, uh, those, those, those uh, test files and patches for it. So... Um, so in here, this is so what I'm looking at right now. This is a CBE repo that we have created. And we're going to expand this to include other things besides just the official MITRE recognized CVE issues. So we'll put all of OSS fuzz issues in here. Everything that has a crasher for file format parsing, we will put in here. Because we use this repo as, well, first of all, it's a convenient way to find out what your particular flavor of HDF5 is vulnerable to. That's a handy tool for that. There's just a script here. You just run the script. It's a shell script. Sorry to Windows people. Maybe we can create a PowerShell script. Um, and it just it tries to run the HDF5 tools over these um, uh, over all these files, right? And so over all the, the test files that we have. And so if you go look at it, it just it has some stuff where it, it runs H5 dump and H5 stat and things like that. And then we have these CVE files in here, and we have collected a big list of these. Um, so handy in case anything ever regresses. And then we actually check this. If you look at a recent PR um, inside here is the CVE dev, the CVE regression test. So we actually run this script every time we have a PR to make sure that we don't regress because that has been a problem in the past where we fix the CVE issue and then later it kind of got unfixed as we uh, rework things inside the library. And this ensures that none of this, uh, none of these things uh, regress on us. And so if you look, in, in this repo, we have this CVE list markdown document, and this has a list of all the new ones. There's quite a few. It's like, I think, 25-ish of these things, quite a lot. Um, and if you click on these links here, they're live. They go to MITRE, right? And so you can see the, the issues that are that are there. And if you go here to this link that's here, this MITRE.org, that's actually an HDF5 filter. And so that should show you everything. Oh, interestingly, it does not show up. But um, let me let me reload this to make sure that that's not something that's cached. No, interesting. Okay, I'll have to make sure that uh, it, uh email mitre uh to tag new issues with HDF five. So yeah, so that link is uh keyword equals HDF five. So it's a filter. 
Um, I, I don't know why those are not uh, showing up in there. So I'll I'll talk to them about that. So um, so that's that's that. And then before I go on to um, I've got like this document here that I put in the HDF5 wiki about some things that we wanted to kind of focus on for HDF5 114.5. Did anybody have any questions about the the working group or the CVE issues? Dana, just a question. Uh, which sure. platforms do you test the, the uh, CVEs on? Is, uh, is we it test on Linux. And, so, there, so all of the tests run on Linux, mm -hmm. um, but it, you, don't, you don't do anything on Windows. No, and the reason we don't really worry too much about that is because we don't really think that those are bugs that are specific to a particular OS, right? Because they're usually, if you look at them and, and what the fixes are for them, they're usually... It's things like running over uh, uh, a buffer boundary or something like that, or trying to divide by zero, right? Because somebody will fuzz a file and the fuzzer will turn like the number of uh, something into zero. And then we'll divide by that inside the library to find a size, something like that. And so they're not really things that we think are um, specific to a particular operating system. So we figure if we test on Linux, that probably catches everything. We could test elsewhere, but it seems like it's not important. And we'd have to rewrite. I mean, right now we only have the the script that we have is a bash script. So it could run anywhere that, that does POSIX shell scripting, but we'd have to rewrite it into a PowerShell script to do that on, on Windows, which you could do. It wouldn't be that hard. In fact, I can add a, I'll add a to-do and make that an issue. Um, Create uh, CVE PowerShell script. So we can actually do that. OK, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? OK, moving on. So, uh, so whenever I have a release, I like to sit down and think about what are the sorts of things that we want to get into the library. And I, I like to have kind of like some themes, right, as we go forward. Um, maybe not as, as focused as like what OpenBSD does, but but similar. Um, so what I have written down here, and this is two things about this. One is that this is not complete. And there are other things that we are working on that we hope to get into 114.5 that are not listed here. This is more the small things that we just want to kind of work on as we work on major features. Like if we got the like crash proofing feature into 1.14.5, that'd be great. It won't happen that quickly, but that may not appear here. Also, this is probably an ambitious list that given the resources that we have, it's probably there's more stuff here to, unless everybody wants to chip in, which we would be very, um, we're very happy to accept your, your pull requests and fixes. There's probably more work here that can be reasonably done in five months, but I would prefer to kind of make a bigger scope so that people do want to come in and pitch in. There's more things that they could potentially work on. So um, I've, I've divided them here into several several bigger sections. One of the things that I would like to do is we do have some other file format parsing issues that have been identified through OSS fuzz. And we do have a few other JIRA issues in our old JIRA system. We completely use GitHub now for, for new issues. But we have a few things that are in Jira that are that are file format crashers. So I would like to get all of that fixed over the summer so that that's ready for um, for 114.5 and then stay on top of OSS fuzz, which generates things at a pretty good clip. And eventually we we and the rate has slowed, but we expect that to slow a lot as we harden the code around the the file format crashers. Um, then I would like to. I feel like we have too many things. We have 140 issues open in in GitHub, and I would like to reduce as much of that load as possible. Um, then we've made a lot of progress over the past year or two to clean up F sanitize issues. And so we have a few that are still left mostly in the undefined area, and we track those on our C dash. Um, so I'd like to get that F sanitize clean um, for 114.5. Um, then we got some other minor stuff. There's some some mercury code and stuff that we'd like to clean up and remove. Um, and then I don't know this would be refresh track move that. Oh, I guess I didn't. Uh, so this the um, oh yeah so the, and then the file image 
uh, code has a uh, uh, an important bug uh, number one not issued number nineteen fifteen, and I'd like to get that fixed and generally go over the file image code, which I think needs a um, a, a look over. Um, and then we've we've worked very hard over the past probably about the past decade. I think Quincy and I really started to work hard on this back in even as we're going into one ten. Um, so we we have a lot of our code compiles warning free. And we'd like to extend that to more places to clean stuff up. Um, so like Windows still has a bunch of of issues, many of which are due to they have thirty two bit longs. Um, so there's probably some type issues we need to look at there. Um, and then there's some other places too where we look at C dash and we see warnings from the build, and we'd like to clean that up and just have C dash be just all green. So um, we'll, we'll work on that and then compilers. We also, we have this, this warning suppression scheme that we use to suppress some things that we can't fix or that we know are not that important. And so I'd like to bring that to a few new compilers too so that we can kind of quiet those things because they're just distracting and they're not things that we can really fix. And we should only turn those on if you're a developer and you really care about those things. Um, then one of the big things that we want to do, so in, in 114.4, we added support for float 16. And we'd like to extend that work to some other data types. So right now, uh, we have a person who is working on complex numbers. Um, there's other machine learning types. And in fact, over here in the forum, if you are interested, there is a um, go here. And uh, let's see, where is the poll? There's a poll in here. Here, so there's a poll. Um, so if you use non IEEE floating point types in machine learning, you should go here and take our poll to see if to, so to let us know what sorts of things you are interested in. Um, so yeah, so uh, bfloat 16, that's a Google Brain format, FP8, FP4, we fly by adding support for those, Boolean type, um, GNU's got the int128. We're thinking of just going through and trying to add as much support as possible for these things. Um, and then there's still some outstanding long double issues, mostly from the, the power long doubles, which are not IEEE 754. Then um, for configure issues, we have package config support for CMake, and, but we do not have it for the auto tools. And I had it close, and I just didn't get it over the the, the hump into 114.4, but I'd like to finish that off and get that in. Um, even though I'd be thrilled to drop the auto tools, I don't think I can do it in 114.4, and I would like to get package config in there. Um, and then one of the things we've been working on um, for over the past couple of releases is improving our support for MinGW and Sigwin, so the kind of Unix-y Windows things. Um, so we're working on that. We're pretty close. It works pretty well with CMake, but the auto tools, I think, still have some issues that we have to address. So um, I'll try to get that into 114.5. Uh, I know that a lot of uh, a lot of wrappers like to use MinGW to create their um their their windows flavors of things so it's important to to get that working um and then i do want to check in we have a bunch of generated source files not the generated auto tools files those will not ever be checked in because they generate a lot of churn as people have different versions of the auto tools but the source files these there's error files and the overflow files and things like that i do want to check those in so that you don't need Perl to build um the the library um, unless you actually check those, change the files that are used to generate that source, which is infrequent. It's not that often that people add an error class or um, do things like that. So um, I would like to get those checked in. And this is preventing us from, uh, there's there's some Perl issues with uh, MinGW and MSYS. So I would like to get that that fixed. Um, there's some performance stuff in terms of, I, we're always looking at general performance issues, but we definitely do want to look um, more at that subfiling. Um, and then I do want Windows to be a first class citizen. For a long time, it was not. And we've made a lot of improvements there, but um, we have, people have submitted Win32 VFDs that use Win32 API calls for IO. Over the years, they get around some of the, the limitations of the POSIX layer on Windows. And I would like to get that in it we've had it in the past i've tried to make it work and there's a few things that it still doesn't do correctly because some of the tests fail or the tests need to be updated we'll see um then i i did add in 114.4 and i didn't make a big deal about it because it's hard for me to test but i did add uh some some code page 
fixes um, to deal with systems where they're doing um, non ASCII files using code pages like shift JIS in Japan. Um, so I would like to get some of the testing set up for that. And we had Unicode testing was difficult for us because CMake was having trouble copying Unicode file names around the last time we tried doing it. And I would like to, I, I think I was just missing some byte order marks in the text file. So I want to retry that. Um, and then Windows has some problems. Realloc is really slow on Windows. And I think this is causing, there's, somebody's reported an H5D write performance issue that may be due to that. And then the core VFD has problems because it does a lot of realics as it increments by whatever you told it the increment was. So we may want to add an API call that instead of doing incrementing the core VFD by a fixed amount, increments by a multiplier. I think that would reduce the number of realics that have to take place. Um, then in terms of testing, um, we people have complained a bunch of times about our version numbering schemes, the way that we name tags and things like that. So we're going to look around and see what other people do to make sure that we do the right thing. And we will try to do the right thing that makes people happy for 1.4.2.5. Um, we're still, we, it's a working on C dash is a work in progress. We're trying to clean up a lot of the, the, we have a few straggling test failures, um, that we're working on. And then. Uh, a lot of warnings that we're, we're looking to clean up. Um, we will this time, so there was a bunch of last minute release issues, which caused us to have a patch release of two um, almost immediately because the, the first release was missing some doctors and stuff, I believe. So uh, we'll have a pre-release and which will be in the middle of September for 114.5 and a code freeze at about that time. And then there'll be no more changes to 114.5 between mid-September and the end of September. Um, and I would like to, in the next release, release signed MSI and DMG files, because I feel like those are really important for um, Windows and Mac. Um, and we'll have a manual test process for anybody who wants to go and test their binaries. Um, and then we're going to move. We have some Vol tool testing. It's one of the last things in the Vol tool test repo or the Vol test repo. And we'll move that to the main repo. Um, we do want to do a bunch of documentation. Um, we've added Doxygen to pretty much everything that is public. Um, all the public API calls, except for some of the developer level stuff. So some of the, the vol and VFD developer calls, like if you're creating a vol connector or VFD, um, then those don't have documentation yet. So we'll work on that. Um, and then the user guide has not been updated in a long time. And we really need to um, get better at, at that. And so one of the things... We won't have enough time in, in the next couple of months to really overhaul it, but I do want to at least create a punch list and add some documentation for things like the newer VFDs that have not been documented in the user guide. Um, then there's some miscellaneous things. We have this PR that's been open forever, 1387. It's been open for like two years. It's a minor uh, data type optimization. I'd like to get that closed off. Um, we have, there's, people have complained that the way that we do our has for things, whether they're relative or absolute, is inconsistent, and um, and they prefer some changes. And so, I'd like to take the time to go over that and at least come up with a document that tells people what we're going to do. I'm not so sure I want to change behavior in in a minor release. That might have to wait for HDF 2.0. And then um, H5R needs a lot more testing. So that's one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to update H5R and go over the test code or go over the, the library code. Um, and then uh, one of our developers rewrote PH5, essentially rewrote PH5 diff to be more efficient and to clean up some stuff. And so that should show up. Um, there's an H5 repack. If you're copying across vol connectors, um, H5O and H5L copy require the same vol connector. And so if you're trying to repack from one file to another, that has problems. And we added some hacks for H5O copy, which will recreate objects. Basically, it, it manually copies everything. It doesn't dive into the library. And so we'll add that to H5 repack as well for H5L copy. Um, and then we'll have some improvements with Fortran wrappers, some H5R improvements, also C code. Um, and uh, we're going to try to work on cross compiling. We still run programs to find the kinds for integers and be nice to fix that. And one of our uh, developers thinks that if we Move to Fortran 2008, we might be able to avoid some of that stuff. So we'll see.
But that's what I have. That's in the list of stuff. If people want to suggest anything, feel free to email me or hassle me here and um, or show up at the HTFI working group. And we'll see about adding it to the list of things to to focus on. Do you have any questions or comments? Hey, Dana, I've got the morning free zone. I uh, noted on the GCC 14.1 release, I threw it in the chat too, that they, they're turning a bunch of the warnings into errors now. So I think we're ahead of the curve, but we should continue to stay ahead of the curve. Mm -hmm. Interesting. GCC 14, warning for the errors. Yeah, usually we're pretty good with GCC and Clang are the ones where we're probably the best about um, being warning free. And in fact, we actually have some of our um, our GitHub actions are built with W error. So it's it's impossible to check a GCC warning in, at least for the versions of GCC that we test in the um, in, in in the GitHub actions. I don't know what latest is. It, it came out from 12 or 13. Yeah, we've done a lot of cleanup. That was a decade-long project, but now HDF5 is warning free on multiple compilers. Sort of. We were, we suppressed a couple of things. Like there's some places where the way that we use const in the library, for example, is um needs would need major architectural changes to fix. So we just kind of suppress those. Anything else? Well, Dana, I will jump in hoping that this video will be looked. So speaking for cloud computing users of HDF5 library, mm -hmm. are there any plans in 1.14.5? Yeah, you know, one of the things I didn't put it on here, uh, one of the things I would like to do is to go over the read-only S3 VFD code. Like that was written a long time ago. Um, and it has not received a lot of attention since. So it'd be nice to have somebody to go over that code to uh, to to clean it up. I just I, I didn't put it on here yet. I don't have a person in mind to to do that work yet. Um, but I would like to have to have that work done. I'll add it to the list. Anybody wants to do that? I mean that's. That that's all cloud stuff is always a high priority for us, but I didn't go over the read only SV VFD code enough to where I had specific fixes in my head. So I didn't put it on here yet. And of course, and people are testing and working on the read only S3 VFD is because the, the cloud optimized HDF5 that Alexander's been working on is proven very popular. And so as, as as Alexander finds issues, we try to fix them as fast as possible so we can get those into the next release. I can think 114.3 was where we released the, we added the cache, the beginning of the, um, the so the first write the first re the first IO access from the uh the read only S3 VFD we cache we we turn the first access into a 16 megabyte read and then we cache that and then that way you don't have to go when as as the library tries to look for stuff in the super block before any of the the caching is really set up that way you're not going to the network for that and that improved a lot of uh a lot of use cases. And then in the last one we did the, I think the most important thing for cloud optimized HDF5 is we made the page buffering more relaxed. And so if you set the page buffering, if you ask for page buffering and the file is not page aggregated, it will, it will not complain anymore. Where in earlier versions of the library, it would complain and you'd have an error. And so you'd have to do this weird thing where you'd open the file, ask how it's aggregated, close it, and then you know, set up page buffering and then reopen it, which was silly. And so now we're much more tolerant of it. And if you, for example, ask for a page buffer size that's smaller than the page aggregation size, now we just, we bump the page buffer to hold at least one page. Um, as before, we would just, we would, we would fail. 
So before it was really strict. It required you to know a lot of things about the file in order to open it up successfully with page buffering. We, we clean that up because that's important for, for cloud optimization to five. And if we have things that come up like that between now and September, we will highly prioritize those. Anything else? Well, thank you for coming. I hope to see some of you at the HDF5 working group meeting. Do you have any trouble with uh, the Zoom or with, I'm not normally a Zoom person or a team shop. So if there's anything that we could be doing better about that, please let me know so that we can make that experience better. Okay. All right, everyone. See you next month. Bye -bye. Have a good Tuesday. Bye.